everyone and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 173. If you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer, thanks so much for checking out my podcast. Uh, this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, and hand-dyeing yarn in Brooklyn where I live. And yes, yeah, so I am so excited that you decided to spend a little bit of your day chatting about all the crafty things with me. Um, and yeah, so as always, you can reach me on Instagram. I'm very active on there. Um, not so much Twitter um, and Facebook. Something I just want to mention really quickly. Um, I am on Facebook and I do receive requests from knitters uh, that are familiar and not familiar, but I just want to put a disclaimer out there. I prefer to keep Facebook for my personal Facebook uh, profile for friends and uh, close friends and family. Uh, so nothing against you guys. If you've tried to friend me and I did not accept your friendship, I, it's nothing to do, nothing personal. I just prefer to keep that private. Um, but I do have a Yarngasm Ravel, uh, a Yarngasm Facebook page and a yarn and a, uh, I'm sorry, a Yarngasm podcast Facebook page, and I do have a Volan Vine Yarns Facebook page. So feel free to join those groups. I'm, you know, I, I do pop in there to read comments and update, and just you know keep the information flowing. Uh, so yeah, just a little disclaimer in there. But yes, I am on Instagram. I'm Volan Vine there. Volan Vine on Ravelry. Um, so yeah, definitely reach out, uh, say hello. I love hearing from you. And yeah, so now that I have that covered, uh, I, I guess I will go right into what I have been working on. Um, I have something off the needles, but it's not a finished object. It's, it's not an FO, it's a hoe. But I'm super excited to finally be done with the back portion of my stone cutter pullover. Um, as you know, this is a pattern by Michelle Wong, and I'm co-hosting a knit along with Lara from the Fawn Knits podcast. Uh, so if you would like to join in in knitting this pattern, please feel free to do so. There's no official start date, but we are there is an end date. We're trying to have it have uh, a deadline by January 1st. So new year, new sweater. Um, granted, it is a very complicated pattern. So if we feel that people need more time, we will push the deadline. Uh, but yes, here is the back portion of my stone cutter pullover. And this is Quince & Co's Lark Base, which is a four ply worsted uh, in the Damson colorway, right? which is like a, just a very purplish dark charcoal gray, I wanna say. Um, so yeah, this, I cannot believe it, it's done. Uh, <laughs> well, not the sweater, but just the back portion. Um, I cannot remember the last time that I knit something as complex as this. Um, but I feel like the most involved part, if you're a little apprehensive or intimidated, intimidated to cast the sweater on, um, I would say that the most involved part is just the cast on. And yes, the cabling, obviously, but once you have a rhythm down or once you get the gist of what's going on in the pattern, it's incredibly intuitive. Um, so I was able to just follow, there's like one main chart that you just have to pay attention to, um, but there are... It, it does, it, it is very forgiving. There are a couple of um, relaxation rows, as I like to call them, with a lot of just knits and pearls. Um, so yeah, it looks a lot more complicated, but if you're, I would definitely say it's a little too complex for a newbie cable knitter, but if you know you have a couple of cable projects under your belt, I would say go for it. Just follow the, follow the, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> follow the directions. Michelle Wong's uh, instructions are very clear. The pattern's incredibly well written. Um, there was one thing that I had a fish for, just one, um, like the, the edging, uh, just the directions for that I had to do a little research for, but it was just a minor thing that I couldn't find, but I did find. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, it just went. Like as soon as I got to the arm decreases, it was just boom, boom, boom. So I am hoping that the front portion of this sweater or jumper or pullover uh, will just fly right off the needles. I say that now, but I'm trying to have this done before we go on vacation, which is we are le um, which is around Christmas time. So, um, yes, I am trying to have that done so I can wear it on vacation. We are me and uh, Dennis and I are going to Italy. So exciting! <laughs> Cannot wait. I, I mentioned this. I talked a little bit about this in Blather last last week. So, it would be nice to have a nice vacation sweater to wear. Um, so yeah, that is very exciting. Um, and I cast on, I was a little tired last night and for some reason I thought it would be a good idea to just cast on the front portion. 
And I will say, I, as I mentioned, it's a, a little bit more involved because it is a um, tubular cast on uh, pattern calls for. Um, so this is as far as as far as I got on it, but I kind of want to start it over because I did have a little hiccup and I feel like something is not quite right. I don't know, it could just be me. I just had to rearrange the, the stitches a little bit, but anyway, it's all in the pattern if you wanna, if you wanna attempt it. Um, but yeah, I, I might just start it over just because I was a little bit not quite awake <laughs> when I was knitting this, a little stressed out. Not, you know, not stressed, just, you know, a little burnt out from the day from working. Um, so yeah, that is, I'm very excited about that. And that is living in my, where did it go? Um, my homespun house bag by Molly. Yay, I love this bag. I say this every week, I love this bag, it's so great. Um, but yeah, perfect sweater project bag. So, so the next thing that I've been working on, which is something that has been kind of on the back burner for quite some time, I think it had to take a, a back seat for, temporarily because I was trying so hard to get my Rhinebeck sweater out. Um, but I pulled it out again. My, this is my Vera Dershaw by the lovely Isabella of the Fluffy Fibers podcast. And this is being knit out of my, uh, my own hand-dyed yarn, uh, the succulents colorway on my Blitzed base, which has a lot of sparkle in it. I don't know if you can even see it. Um, but yeah, this has been getting a lot of love these past couple of days and I, don't, I had a little hiccup here. I don't know where that came from, but it's not a tragedy. I'm not going to frog back. I, there's nothing, I, I can definitely save it and make it look um, fine if I just take a, you know, a darning needle and kind of stitch it together in the back. It's totally cool. So I'm not going to frog back. It's perfectly, it's not going to bother me. Um, but yes, I gave this a lot of love this past week. And um, yeah, I mean, I had, as you remember, as you recall in the last episode, I, I mentioned that I wanted to start knitting on this again. Um, but it was just, I don't even want to mention this on the podcast because I kind of want this just to be a nice, relaxing, happy hour for anybody watching, uh, you know, not to bring up politics or the news, and but just in light of what happened on Friday. It was extra special just or meaningful to work on this pattern um, ever since what happened. Uh, just knitting positive, happy thoughts into it and thinking of Isabelle in France. And yeah, so I was, I was very happy to be picking, to be knitting on this again. Um, and I wanna finish it very soon. Uh, and it looks like I will be finishing it. I don't know where exactly I, I picked it up again, but I did get a lot done. So very pleased about that and soon soon it will be done it will be done so a very lovely pattern again it's the virgin shawl by isabel of the fluffy fibers podcast i think i mentioned that yes <laughs> so yay that will be done very soon cannot wait um and it might not be the perfect spring shawl any longer but it will be the perfect fall shawl <laughs> or winter shawl and it's very icy if you think about it yeah like this color is just incredibly it's green but like a nice winter green I almost want to say so nothing will stop me from wearing that during the winter um so yeah and the next thing surprisingly that I picked up again I think because I was talking with Molly from a homespun house and a couple of other people and I've just been I've seen a bunch of other people working on theirs and it was actually calling out to me um this past weekend I don't know I, I was just kind of like in a was it last weekend or the I don't know, I forget. I was having kind of like a, a block kind of day, you know, when you get in those moods where you're just like, you don't know why, you're just kind of in a bad mood. <laughs> and I was having one of those days, I didn't know what to knit on. I didn't feel like knitting on anything or spinning on anything. And I was just like, you know, it's been a while since I knit on my Cozy Memories blanket. So I pulled it out again. And again, it's living in my um, homespun house bag by Molly um, with the naughty kitties. So. I pulled it out again and I put such a big dent in this. Um, I put five squares in it since I picked it up, which has been like over the past week. So about a square a day. Um, so let me see. I don't even, I have like all, I have a huge bin of mini skeins that I've received from swaps. Um, and it's just growing and growing and growing. So I obviously, I have to do something with them. And unfortunately, I don't remember where all of these came from anymore. Um, so I apologize if I don't remember, but um, most recently, these are, this one right here is from Mina. 
of the Knitting Expat podcast uh, when she came to hang out with us at Gage Intention a couple weekends ago. She brought a whole grab bag of mini skeins and we all just kind of, you know, all of us there just kind of picked and, you know, picked the ones that we liked. And she picked out this one for me, uh, which is Pond by Bar uh, Baron Vaudan, uh, which is a very, <laughs> very popular colorway that I've been trying to get my hands on uh, for quite some time. And it's always sold out. Every time I go to her shop, I always miss the updates. <sighs> So, uh, but yes, uh, Mina gave me a square to knit into my cozy memories blanket. So that's that. And then this is a, I am so in love. This is a hand spun, uh, fuzzling that I spun up from fondant fibers. And I don't know what the fiber content is. I don't know what the colorway is, but it was just a fuzzling, um, that Deb gave in, uh, included in her random bag of fuzzlings that I ordered. Uh, so Deb, if you're watching, Whatever colorway this is, I would I would love four more ounces of it. Yeah, just just putting that out there, you know. Uh, but it's so I just all these peaches and pinks and like this like light mint green that just kind of pops in there. Yeah, so lots of fun. Uh, and then this one I believe is from Tanya from the Knitting Spring podcast. Uh, she gave me a whole bunch of um, mini skeins as well. And I finally knit one into there. I think that's pretty sure that's from you, Tanya. And again, this one's from Mina. Uh, this is, I think, String Theory. I'm pretty sure it is. And it's just like this really beautiful mauve and like dark mauve and purple aubergine, if you will. Aubergine, however you pronounce it. And I'm totally blanking on <laughs> where this one is from, but it's this really lovely green and just green speckled yarn. It's really beautiful. Um, so yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm finished with, I think, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, five around here. And then let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So I have 55 squares. Yay, it's getting, it's growing. It's growing, you guys. And lots of ends to weave in, um, just mainly on the, on the borders, just on the outside. Um, so I do, I am weaving in as I go, uh, as I go, just just holding off on the ones on around the uh, around the border, and I get asked this quite a lot, so I guess I'll just mention it every time that I uh, bring up my <laughs> my cozy memories blanket. But um, I am using size US size fours. I'm not sure what that is in metrics. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it says right here, uh, 3.5 millimeter, and I believe yeah. I don't know where my my ruler that tells me my gauge, my needle gauges, but yeah, three three point five millimeters, uh, U.S. size four needles, and I'm a forty stitch count, so twenty stitches on one side of the stitch marker and twenty stitches on the other side of the stitch marker. In case you were curious, so yes, that is where I am with that. Um, and what else do I have on the needles? Uh, I have Dennis's socks <laughs> that I'm still working on. Uh, these are, yeah, not a, not a huge amount of progress, but uh, uh, these are, what is it, skein top drawer sock in the Savannah colorway, which is just this gorgeous brown, uh, I would say just cobalt blue and tan and white, and then just like very subtle flecks of red in there. And it's incredibly soft. Dennis is loving it so far. Uh, Fish lips kiss heel, cuff down. Uh, yeah, and this is just the same sock, and I'm knitting these on US 1.5 uh, carbons, which I love. These are, I know, I, I remember talking about how I had, or I did have a love affair with Chiao Goose, and I still love Chiao Goose. They have a great point. Um, they're wonderful to knit with, and they look really pretty. Uh, but I find that over time, the, uh, the red lace cable gets kinked up a, a little bit uh so it, it bends very easily or they're, they're just i find in all my needles that there are just some kinks in it um in the circulars so i don't know but i find with the carbons it's just so delightfully floppy and not not like too floppy but it, there's some substance to it but it doesn't get in the way and it's you know it, they just hold up really well i've never had a problem with these um so yeah, these are my new, my new favorite go-to uh, knitting needles for knitting at least socks. So yay, so there's that. Um, and what else? Yeah, oh, and last night I, 
it's been a while since I cast on anything new, and I know I still have projects that I have to finish, um, but for at the moment, <sighs> the main things I want to finish are my stonecutter pullover, Dennis's socks, obviously, um, and my verdure shawl. Those are high priority right now to get off the needles, um, and that what I'm actually enjoying knitting on at the moment. But uh, I kind of, Dennis, if you're watching this, go away. I know he probably isn't watching this. I don't think he really ever watches my podcast. Uh, not that I expect him to or want him to, but um, maybe he, sometimes he watches the beginning of them when he has time at work. Um, but if you're watching, please go away because I'm going to talk about you um, and what I'm working on for you for the holidays. So um, I know Dennis's parents are watching, so you guys are totally cool to watch. Just don't tell him what I'm working on um, <laughs> for him. But I kind of wanted to knit him something a little more special than socks. Not that socks aren't special, but just something that, you know, won't be hidden in his shoes. Um, so I figured, he says he has enough hats, he has enough socks, and I thought, okay, it's been a while since I knit him a pair of mittens. I don't think I've ever knit him a pair of mittens before. Um, I knit him a pair of, um, fingerless mitts, but never like a full-on pair of mittens. And I saw this one pattern by Spilly Jane on Ravelry. I think she designed this for one ver one volume of Wool People a while ago. And if you're not familiar with, familiar with Spilly Jane, she designs these beautiful, really funny, uh, kind of like tongue-in-cheek kind of uh, fair, oh, not fair aisle, um, color work mittens uh, where I think she has beer mugs and then she has snails and then she has cupcakes on one. Um, and she has like an owl. I knit a pair of owl, uh, owl fingerless mitts that she designed a while back, uh, and they're just so fun. And I saw one that just screamed Dennis because, as you know, he's an architect. He loves architecture, and one of them was designed after, um, I what is it? Uh, yeah, Thirty Fourth and Eighth Avenue. So yes, it is the Empire State <laughs> Building. Brain fart, guys. Um, that it was uh, inspired by, and I'm knitting. I cast it on yesterday. And I'm knitting this out of Brooklyn Tweed Loft, and this is the Fossil colorway, and then uh, which is the white, and then here you have Almanac, which is the Tweedy Navy Blue. So I cast this on yesterday, and the pattern is actually designed for a woman's medium, or like an average sized woman's hand. And I and so I I decided to go up in a whole needle size, so it's a U.S. size one, and then I went up to a U.S. size two. And I have no idea what needles these are, but this might, yeah, US size two, which is a 2.75 millimeter. Um, these might be Haya Haya's. I'm not sure. I don't remember when I got these, but at one point I needed a size two needle and I ordered, I ordered these. Um, so yeah, this is where I am. And it seems quite big. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little concerned that it might be a little too big for him. Um, but then, because he says his wrist is, my wrist is six inches in circumference. He says his wrist is seven inches in circumference. Um, and then he says his hand is 10 inches in circumference. And that's what this measures out to. So, you know, I know he doesn't have ginormous gorilla hands, but at the same time, I'm just kind of looking at these and I'm like, mm. but I'm just, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to keep knitting on it. Um, and if, if it so happens that his hands are not as big as he says they are. Um, I'm just gonna knit him a pair of insert mittens. So, you know, he can have two layers and they'll be extra warm. Um, so I think he's really going to like these. I hope he does. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm having so much fun knitting. Uh, I really I really do miss knitting color work because it is very relaxing. And I, yes, I do knit with both of my hands when I knit. Um, color work uh, patterns and uh, oh this is the other hiccup that I forgot to mention uh, Brooklyn Tweed yarn is incredibly lofty and very fragile I'm finding because if you pull it ever so slightly it's very weak it just tears apart you don't have to struggle too hard to pull it apart and I think I was trying to kind of tighten my stitches a little bit because I was switching to the other side because I'm knitting these magic loop um, and I pulled a little too hard and it just kind of tore apart. So I've got to tink back a little bit and just kind of weave that end in. But yeah, so that's where I am with this. Really enjoying it. Um, hoping to have it done before Hanukkah, which is the holiday he celebrates, um, or Christmas, which is the 
you know, we sell together. We celebrate both holidays. So um, either or, whichever one it's done for, that'll be awesome. So um, anyway, I'm rambling. So that is it for what is on my needles, I think. Let me check my show notes. Um, yeah. So, all right, I'm going to move on to spinning because there has been some spinning going on. Um, sorry, I have to take a drink of soda. Um, as you know, I picked up a, a, a bullseye bump from Loop at Rhinebeck this year. And this is her... Yeah, her bullseye bumps in the Ulm colorway. And it's 5.5 ounces of merino, bamboo, tussa silk, and angelina. And just giving you an idea. Yeah, totally my colors. You got some like gray in there, light gray, dark, like charcoal black. And then there's some mauve, obviously, some brown. And the color changes really are pretty, um, the color changes over pretty quickly, which I like. It holds my attention, uh, especially because it's a lot of neutral colors in there and black and brown. And normally I would not go for those, but I think the mauve just kind of, it's like something like keep your eye on the prize, Chris, and just go for it. You know, I just love the combination of it. So I've been getting a lot of spinning done on my wheel this past week. I think because I was on the phone a lot. And for some reason I thought, you know, whenever I was on the phone, I just... Felt, you know, I had my earphone um, microphone in while I was doing it. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll just get some spinning done while I am chatting with whoever I was chatting with. <laughs> and um, so here it is on Tallulah. Yay. And this is on my Acreworks 3, 3D printed uh, bobbin uh, hot pink. So, uh, yeah. So there you go. I don't know. You can't really see it, but right now there's a some light gray under there and then there's uh, brown and then like this charcoal black again and then the mauve is like all underneath and then there's another row of mauve coming in in the bullseye bump so I'm very very excited about that clearly um, so yeah that's pretty much all the spinning I've been doing I have not weighed how much is left uh, I am gonna Navajo ply it uh, just to keep the color striping consistent and I think I will at least get a sport weight um, yeah, because that's what I'm. I'm kind of hoping or aiming for a thin, uh, a thin gauge on that. Um, so yeah, that's that is where I am with that. And then oh, and I almost forgot to mention that uh, I have been receiving a lot of requests uh, for a video of me spinning on a drop spindle. Uh, so I went ahead and I filmed myself uh, spinning on a drop, two of my favorite spindles, uh, a top roll spindle and a Turkish spindle. So the episode's out, it's on its own. If you go to YouTube it's or iTunes, it's there. Um, it's about seven minutes long. And I, you know, I, I am by no means a expert drop spindler, uh, but I do uh, just share the way that I like to spin uh, and, you know, give a couple of tips and recommend um, some helpful uh, videos that you can watch or um, instructors that are worth looking into if you're learning to improve, uh, learn to drop spindle or looking to improve your spindling. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out. I hope it's very helpful. Um, but yeah, otherwise I am gonna move along to sewing. No sewing to speak of this week, sadly. Um, I There's just been too much going on and just me trying to get some knitting done and off the needles, as I mentioned. Uh, so sewing kind of had to take a back for, had to take a back seat this past week. Um, but I did want to mention, uh, as you know, last week I kind of put a, uh, a call out for names to name my new sewing friend behind me, um, who I'm, I'm finding a lot of, yeah, I'm taking a lot of, blah, blah. I'm having a lot of fun dressing her up every other day or so, just, you know, alternating her shawls and like putting different knitted things on her. It's, it's, it's a little crazy, a little creepy, but you know, why not? Why not just keep things exciting? So, cause I, like when I'm home, it's too warm to wear a shawl, but at least I, I can take pleasure in knowing that she's enjoying the shawls while I'm working. It's, it's, you know, but anyway, I was looking for a name and many of you have reached out and uh, gave me, uh, I, I received a whole bunch of suggestions for names. Um, so I'll just go through the list. Uh, there was Gladys, Daphne, Greta, Ethel, Maud, Marilyn, uh, Wilhelmina, and Marie Antoinette. Uh, and oh, oh, and Anne Boleyn, because Marge 08. I really had a laugh when I read her uh, suggestions because yes, um, it is kind of ironic that she doesn't have a head and Anne Boleyn and Marie Antoinette are known for their headlessness. 
So I I was really, I don't know, I'm torn. I am so torn because I want to name her either Marie Antoinette or another name that kept popping up and sticking in my brain uh, was Margot, uh, named after Margot from the Royal Tenenbaums, one of my favorite movies of all times. Um, she's one of my favorite characters, um, Margot Tenenbaum. Uh, and then I, did, I heard it a couple of other times this past week. Someone had a daughter named Margot and just, it's always been like one of my favorite names. So I don't know, it's like a toss up between Margot and Marie Antoinette. So I will let you know next week what I decide, but right now I'm just a little bit torn. But I just want to say thank you to everybody for the awesome, wonderful suggestions. I loved, I loved how classic they were and retro and yeah, because I do love those um, like 1920s names. Like Maud is definitely a really nice name. Um, and I know one of my favorite like names for a guy is Harold. So I have to find something to name Harold. Anyway. Random facts. Um, so yes, that is it for sewing this week. Uh, I did do a little sewing, and I'll show you that in um, shop update. But um, I think I'll just move on to Ask Away because we have a question in Ask Away. Uh, Megan Ludwig on Ravelry asks, "Do you have any shawl recommendations for ones for uh, one skeins?" I kind of she asked me like a, a more detailed question, but I just kind of thought, you know, all right, let me just encompass like turn it into like one question that covers it all so um yeah i mean it's a very common like a very common question to ask like you know do you have any recommendations for one skeins because you know when we buy those one skeins of 400 yards give or take um you know it would be nice to have like a handful of patterns you can go to and know that you could cast it cast them on and have enough yarn to knit them um, so yeah, I actually compiled a, li a little list uh, of some of my favorite uh, one skein patterns um, for shawls and definitely Molly's Whispering Pine shawl. As you know, I wear that shawl all the time. It only took one skein of my yarn. I think I, I knit it out of uh, my Volca base in the uh, Jilted Rose colorway. And I knit it with beads and it was it's absolutely beautiful. And it's big and it just covers my neck. Um, so that's one pattern. And then another one of my favorite designers is uh, Judy Marples. Uh, she's known as Spinny Knitter on Ravelry. And I've knit two of her shawls in the past. I knit uh, the Harmony shawl and the Raven's Nest shawl. All they just took one skein, um, and yeah, I have I still have a whole bunch of patterns on my queue that I want to knit out of hers. But I'm just you know it's like you don't want to knit that just to knit it. I, I'm just waiting for the yarn, the right yarn to come along and say I want to be that. So yes, I, I definitely love her um, designs, especially like the shawl. She does like these asymmetrical. Um, can't describe them them they're not triangular but they have kind of like this asymmetrical square edge to them and just very very different um, so if you're looking for something out of the ordinary um, or just yeah definitely check out her patterns um, and then there's the obviously the Verdure shawl by Isabel I think she just came out with uh, the Bon Bon shawl a smaller version um, which is lovely and I definitely want to cast that on as well all these patterns um, the brandy wine, which I forgot to mention, my uh, <laughs> my dress form is actually wearing uh, the brandy wine shawl by one of my another one of my favorite designers, um, Romy Hill, um, and that is using one skein of um, Blue Moon Fiber Art socks that rock in the True Blood colorway, and um, yeah, so I think that's it. But yes, if anybody else out there has any one skein shawl uh, pattern suggestions, please leave them in the Ravelry uh, this ep for this episode, the Yarngasm Ravelry um, episode thread. And yeah, so I hope that answers your question and you're inspired to cast on a gorgeous shawl using one of those patterns or something else you come across. Um, so yeah, otherwise, wow, that is a lot of chatting. <laughs> I feel like I'm just kind of, wow. It's been a long week. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna move on to shop update stuff um, because I have a big, 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 big shop update tomorrow. I've been a busy, busy bee this week. Okay, so I have, I have a very big box in front of me, so it's gonna be quite a large uh, update tomorrow. Um, I'm not gonna have many project bags to show for tomorrow, but I do have a couple of no uh, quick notions pouches uh, that I sewed. Um, so here's one in really fun holiday color, in a really fun holiday print. Um, so I love the ornaments. And then on the inside has just kind of like these mistletoe, I don't know, it's just like holly and fun Christmas 
holiday fetty, if you want to call it that. Um, but yeah, just some really simple uh, project bags that you can keep your notions in or even a small, if you really wanted to, you can keep a small little project in there. Like, if, oh, if you're knitting a holiday ornament or a small stuffy, you can certainly keep that in here. It has like a nice little um, pull tab. So I have two of those and one has contrasting, has like a contrasting pull tab. So yay, there's that. Um, I will have Outlander. Uh, here it is on Blitz, and then here it is on Gatsby, my new silk, 50-50 silk merino base, non-superwash. Um, I have some uh, like semi-solid colorways on the Toasty base, the new my new uh, worsted four-ply, non-superwash also. Um, I haven't named this one yet. Uh, these are pretty much all going to be one of a kinds, I think, especially this purple, but I've just been having fun in the dye pot seeing uh, what the non super washes can take and what they can't take, um, but at the same time getting really, really beautiful results. Um, I especially love this one because it has kind of like this. Um, yeah, it's just like a shaded green. Anyway, it's really cool. Um, and I have this new colorway out. It's kind of, it, it's, I want to say a brown, but with purple undertones to it. Not exactly a mauve, <laughs> um, but it, more so a brown. Um, but I haven't named it yet but I have an idea. So that will be TBD until the shop update. But here it is on Blitzed, here it is on Volka, and I have, upon popular demand, I have Nevermore, uh, which is kind of like a dark charcoal purplish gray. It's a shaded solid on Blitzed, and then I have it on several of my other bases. I have Gashley Crumb, Volka, Gatsby, so that's that. And then I have Poe. Poe will be back in the shop. Um, I will have special snowflake. <laughs> uh, what else do I have? Du -du 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 -du. Uh, fairy hair, that will be in there on various bases. And then, so I was actually watching the Tiny Paper Foxes podcast earlier this week, hosted by Jenny, and she had mentioned that she received a mini skein of some of my hand dyed yarn uh, in the gouge away colorway and um, yeah it's been a while since I knit that up or since I dyed that and it's actually a color that I named after one of my favorite uh, pixie songs and you are so correct Jenny you are so correct Jenny like if you're watching this um, that it is a very me colorway and I could not resist dyeing some more up after you mentioned it because I'm like it's it's been a while so I dyed some more up, and this is it on Gatsby. Um, I dyed it up on Volca, and I think I'm going to dye up some more today if I have time um, on some other bases. But yes, this will be back in the shop. Um, yeah, so I'm very excited about that, and it, it's not self-striping at all. It's just uh, a variegated uh, colorway of just obviously mauve, <laughs> some gray, and like this really cool uh, like grayish grayish blue. Um, it's in, like peach in there, I think. But yeah, just very muted, very, very, very muted. So that will be in the shop. Um, and yeah, I think that is it. So huge update tomorrow. <laughs> I, I have, I've died quite a lot this week. Um, yeah, so I think that is it for shop update. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is, yes, I will be having another uh, trunk show at Gage Intention on December 12th and December 13th. So if you're going to be in the New York area, please do stop by. It's, uh, on, it's in Brooklyn, Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Uh, so I would love to meet you. And yeah, it would just be fun uh, to hang out and knit with you guys. And and the like. So I'm oh, as always, I'm always excited to, you know, do trunk shows there and meet customers. And yeah, it, it's always a good time. So yay, so much fun. And oh, goodness, yeah, I think that is it. That is it for this week. Um, so I'm going to segue into blather. Um, nothing much really going on, you know, except for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's coming up in a couple of weeks, which is crazy. Um, yeah, lots of food. All right. I better stop eating now <laughs> just to make room for all the food that I'm going to eat. Um, but yeah, we're going to spend it. Uh, we're going to go to Pennsylvania to visit Dennis's, uh, my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law uh, and the kids, our niece and nephew. They usually host Thanksgiving every year. So we're going to go, we're going to go visit them, uh, which will be fun. Uh, it's always great to get out of the city. And then, yeah, we have Italy coming up, which will be really, really, really nice. I cannot wait. I need a vacation badly um but yeah 
otherwise, uh, Vogue Knitting Live is coming up after that. Oh my goodness. <sighs> anyway, but yes, I, I did want to mention Vogue Knitting Live because uh, my friend Maria, uh, she hosts the Subway Knits podcast and she has a Learn to Knit in Japanese class, which, oh my gosh, it sold out so quickly. I think the same day they listed the class. Um, so the first class sold out, but it was so popular that they added another uh, class. So if you are still interested, I think there are a couple of slots left open, but if you're interested in learning uh, how to knit in Japanese and you're going to be at Vogue Knitting Live, uh, and you're going to be around Saturday, January, uh, what is it? Oh goodness. I forgot to write the date, but, um, I will post this in the down bar or the show notes, but, um, that, that Saturday that Vogue Knitting Live is going on, uh, if you're going to be around from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., she is teaching another class where I believe there are still some slots open. So her, I, I'll put a link in the show notes, hurry over to her blog and, and register. So she's great. I've known Maria for... Oh goodness, I think it's going on four or five years now that we've known each other and she's just, she's a brilliant teacher. So um, definitely check that out. But otherwise, as a Knit More Girls say, I think I've come to the end of my row. <laughs> so that said, happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye. La, 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 la.